to a second annual 3638 Coffee Club annual meeting. And uh, enjoy having everybody here and a wonderful breakfast this morning and um, welcome to you that are watching us on television here uh, this morning. We uh, start out this morning. Last year we uh, agreed to have the Golden <coughs> Cup Awards. And um, with that, I'm going to turn that over to Tom to explain what the different awards are for the Golden Cup Awards. Tom? Okay, this year, um, although we talked about having three uh, specific Golden Cup Awards after David and I got together by email, we discovered there were a lot more things that we wanted to be able to award people for, for their accomplishments and contributions this year. And so, I have a, a large stack of awards here and one special one that we'll end with. Uh, we'll pass these out and I'll give a word or two a comment about each one. Uh, unfortunately, a couple of our most uh, devoted members are not with us this morning, but uh, perhaps we can share this video with them and, and, uh, and they will uh, receive their award in a virtual way. The first one is, um, and here's how this works, um, there's a title for the award and then a little explanation. <clears throat> and this goes to Jim Ballon, K4PZ, as an avid radio outdoorsman <coughs> and uh, in recognition of his never leaving the house without a radio. And I'm going to pass these to David and if you will sign those and date them, then we can pass them on. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I can take Jim's. You can take James. <laughs> Today is the fifteenth. Fifteenth, yeah. <laughs> All day long. Even if it rains. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this one uh, goes to Bill Barr. Uh, quite by accident, uh, two people who are not able to be with us this morning mm -hmm. both have names starting with B.A. and so they come at the beginning of the alphabetical list, but this one goes to Bill Barr for the wackiest story and it took a little thinking to know how I could delicately express <laughs> what we were recognizing Bill for, but it's uh, his detailed account of the private parts of armadillos. <laughs> I, think, yeah. Here, here. Yeah. Here, there. I think most of you remember the armadillo discussion that we had uh, maybe six, eight months ago. I wasn't on yet, could you? Did, didn't didn't we have a show and tell on that also? I think Bill could bring you up to date. Yeah, he had a show and tell <laughs> breakfast one. Yeah, I'm glad you put the um, story because you know, he's got a few of them. Yeah. So. Uh, I wish Murray were here today uh, because, because... We don't do. Yeah, uh, because this award goes to the best rested ham, <laughs> and that's in recognition of sleeping in and missing the morning action. Here's another person that isn't able to be with us today. Um, um, this is the Great Contributor Award that goes to Don Collins. Whenever, uh, whenever we needed a story or some. Uh, entertainment. Don is always able to come up with some recollection that he would share with us. Yeah. Yeah. This one goes to uh, our videographer, Jim Farmer, K4BSE, as our technical expert. And that is in recognition of his always being able to share reliable technical information. Uh, where did you get that word reliable? <laughs> <laughs> I made that up. <laughs> that ain't me. If you were an English major, you can do that. Uh, Steve Forster hasn't been able to join us a lot this year, but he is a good member and uh, uh, KK4LSS. And this is the award for being a ham gear aging pro. Uh -huh. Doesn't mean that he's aging. It means he knows how to keep new gear in a box until it's outdated. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
No new gear will be executed. Kind of like champagne. You know, champagne is they go in and, and yeah. twist the bottles back, and I think they give them a quarter of a turn um, right. each month or, <laughs> or something like that. Steve is a master of doing that. Uh -huh. <clears throat> uh, there's one person that's very reliable about listening in to us uh, in the mornings. I don't know how he's able to stand it, but he, uh, he continues to do that to the best of my knowledge. And once in a while, he contributes valuable information by uh, sending us an email after the fact, if he has some insights onto a topic that we've discussed. That's Dale Goodman, KD4CVR. And uh, this is the best eavesdropper award. <laughs> Uh, if you'll forgive me, I'm going to present an award to myself, <laughs> and uh, this is uh, this is f uh, the Nevis Antenna Nut Award. Oh, yeah. And uh, if you know what the NVIS antenna is, the Near Vertical Incidence, uh, and it's uh, in recognition of my belief that the lower the antenna, the better. <laughs> uh, of course, most antennas work to some degree. Uh, Elias gets the award for our security guru <laughs> and he, for sharing important security <coughs> tips and alerts. First security tip. Get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> Ned K WC4X gets the award for our legal eagle, eagle, legal eagle uh, for keeping us up to speed on the rules and regs. <coughs> Donald gets the award for contest demon. Uh, working every ham contest known to mankind. I I must say though I am a casual contester. I never wear a tie when I'm contesting. That is so comforting to know. This goes to the coolest ham, and that is Michael Stanley AI4PL for reporting the lowest morning temperature every day. <laughs> uh, Chris Francis were here because. Uh, his book, uh, Lady Bean's book, I understand now, is just off the press. Oh, wow. And um, so we give, we're giving um, Francis the Best Man Staff Award. No. Uh, and that is in hum for humble and obedient service to Ms. Lady Bean. And this last one is on a different color of paper because this truly is a gold award. <laughs> and this goes to our best group leader. Yay! Yay. <laughs> David Wall in A4AE for best attendance. I pointed out to him the other day oh, that yeah. he gets the attendance award because he's there every day. And dedication to the club. Thank you. Thank you. You get to sign your own certificate there? No, I, no. Get, I get everybody to sign. Oh. Yeah. Uh, every morning that I'm able to listen or able to take part, I keep a little log on my computer of what we've talked about because we commented last year or the year before that we really get into some bizarre and uh, unusual topics that you would not think would come up in a group of radio people. Uh, and so uh, I compiled that whole list, I kept it in one long list in the notes file. And I decided, well, I'm going to go through this and uh, pick out some that uh, would be really interesting to talk about and to remind ourselves of how far afield we have gone from Ohm's Law and other technical topics in our, in our morning conversations. Well, I printed that out um, in nine-point type. Wow. <laughs> wow. Look at that. And as you can see... We have covered Impressive. a lot of topics, and I got about a third of the way through this, trying to pull out some of the best ones, and I decided that wasn't going to work. There are 27 pages <laughs> of topics, but what I did last, uh, last uh -huh. yesterday or the day before was to talk a little, to put together a little short uh, comments about what we talk about when we get together in the air in the morning. I don't know if anybody asks you, but some people ask me, what do you guys talk about in the morning? Much of our time is spent on technical topics, as you might imagine. <clears throat> we talk about radios, antennas, test instruments, grounding, grounding a lot, lightning a lot, <laughs> band conditions, de-expeditions, and ham fests. We also talk about computers, large and small, including desktops and Raspberry Pis, software and security. 
We talk about GPS systems, Amazon's Alexa. We had quite a few conversations about that earlier in the year. Wi-Fi and more. <coughs> we talk about airplanes, big and small, by which I mean commercial aircraft, which some of our members have flown. Uh, I guess maybe mainly Jim. And, uh, and small, which some of our members are still flying, like Murray. And cars, car repairs, tires, and innovations. Uh, this was the year that Francis bought, bought a new car, and we had a lot of conversations about what a cable loaded with and getting used to it and so on. But sometimes we get off on a wide range of topics that are based on our past or our recent experiences. And I've grown up with about 15 here, so that I would totally bore you to death. But here are some topics that I pulled from these that, um, that are a little bit different, and I think you'll enjoy them. First of all, we've talked several times about the annual swarming of snake bugs and ladybugs, and some people got them and some don't, you know, and we don't know why. Second one has been a big theme and an important one here on this property, how to get rid of groundhogs under your well house through the use of lethal force. <laughs> Then we had the point yard theft of a pig statue and the owner's uh, resulting outrage and frustration. That, that, that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we have it, cameras and everything all, all out to, to catch the, the culprits. <laughs> it seems like uh, this is a perennial topic. It comes up every year at some point, making sauerkraut and sausage. And uh, I think you can imagine who might be reading that in that conversation. That would be uh, PZ. Uh, cats and dogs and how they make up their humans. Uh, the shortage of craftsmen in the U.S. who can build new weather beans. That's a serious concern. Uh, we're going to get all the wind-up clocks from here. The history of the Fox Theater and Lincoln Square in Atlanta. I learned a lot from that conversation, I do not know. Probably others did too. Uh, the resurgence of interest in vinyl LP records. And I can give you this page on that, but we don't have time for that. How to sneak new radio equipment into the house. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see it, it's Holly. <laughs> you didn't hear what was being said. <laughs> Everything's 50 bucks. I was going to say, that's the important thing. Nothing over 50 bucks. Uh, Squirrel and rabbit populations are up this year, and we speculated as to whether that perhaps there were not enough hawks. And to end on a sweet note, memories of homemade peach ice cream. But um, it's interesting to have people from other parts of the country join in with us also yeah. um, to kind of widen our scope. Well, you well, I mean, at that hour of the day, we're heard all over the East. Yeah. I literally think that we have hundreds of listeners that listen to us because some of these people like the guy in North Carolina there, uh, 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 Don uh, Scholl, and they said, I listen to you guys every morning. And it, it's like a, a morning talk program, you know, a, a lot of hams that listen. And literally, we have hundreds of people who are monitoring us. We should say, for a free toaster, call 1 800. Right, right. The only thing about using the headset and the uh, boom mic, Holly is sitting right there having breakfast and she doesn't hear the other side of the conversation. <laughs> and, and so. Wouldn't that be a blessing? <laughs> <laughs> no, ac actually, as I won't say for you, you'd say yourself, but she's enjoyed listening to the conversation <laughs> in, in, in the mornings that we've had also. And, and I will step out of line possibly by saying, uh, based on my very limited acquaintance with all of you all, uh, except, you know, by name and uh, the occasional uh, circumstance or whatever, but not having been with you before, I would say if I were a single woman, there is not a one of you that I would not enjoy going out to dinner with. I thought you were going to say the opposite. No, no, you are. You are a neat bunch of guys. You really are. Articulate, every one of you all, and genuine. And it may be good that uh, he doesn't have a speaker, so she can't hear what we say. <laughs> it might change her opinion. <laughs> Luckily, I noticed you didn't have wives on there. <laughs> What's that? You didn't have anything about wives. On there. Yeah, it's true. We, yeah. we avoid that topic. Well, yeah, for the most part, yeah. Every once in a while. Paul takes you in and wives. Yeah. Well, I thought you said wines. Uh, <laughs> no, man, it's got that covered. <laughs> no, we can't take wine off the list. We would have a couple of members. We would just totally disbar. Right. Right. No pun on bar or <laughs> saying that we're going to disbar anybody or anything. Yeah, Bill, you didn't order. hear that. Hmm. He can get the wine out of the ward, right? Bill. I don't think I told you this, but when we went to the Christmas party, um, Bill and I talked afterwards, and I said, well, you know, after the holidays, we want you and your wife to come over to the house and we'll have some martinis. And when I saw him at the hospital last Sunday, I said, you know, I wanted to get together, but not like this. We're going to have you over those martinis. He's, well, don't forget it. <laughs> so we'll, we'll do that later when he's feeling better. We're able to get around better. <laughs>